Hey guys, so the prompt for this week's weekly UI is to design a recipe. Um, so I am going to do a recipe on like a, a blog. Um, I usually get a lot of recipes off of Pinterest and those link me to blogs. Um, so I am going to do one for a really simple three ingredient peanut butter cookie that is actually pretty good if you have zero motivation to bake. Um, yeah, so here we go. I'm going to grab our content here and then that way I don't have to keep switching back and forth between the two. Um, and first things first, we need a title, three ingredient peanut butter cookie, and then I'm going to type out all of the information that we've got here. So I always really appreciate when a recipe, especially one for cookies, tells me how much it's going to make, um, how long it's going to take me to prepare, and how long it's actually going to cook. And then obviously you can do simple math, but a total time is also nice to be able to glance at. So we've got that information. We're going to make it up really tiny because it is really just like details about the, uh, the recipe. is not necessarily important information, um, but it's nice to know. So we'll make it less prominent than the title, obviously. Um, and then I'm going to write a description here, and I'll tweak it a little bit from theirs because their description talks about uh, holidays and cookie swaps and things of that nature, but I want to make it a little bit more generic since we are nowhere near Christmas at this point in time. Um, so next thing on the page would be ingredients. Um, so I'm going to list these out nice and orderly. Um, there we go. Okay, so we've got our numbers and our ingredients and visually it's really nice when you have lists that are in units like this um, that like all of the actual items line up left align and the uh, quantities are kind of in their own alignment. Um, this alignment's not great but we're just going to do this as a starting point. Um, so next is the directions so I'm going to break these out a little bit differently than they have them as well because they've combined a lot into the first step here um, and that's not quite it's not really an accurate portrayal there's like two or three steps in this first step so um, first step is to preheat the oven and mix the ingredients next is to roll the dough into your dough balls and put them on the cookie sheet Um, let's see, we'll get the cookies ready, flatten them with a cup, and add a pattern to the top with a fork. This is a really long line length. We're going to have to cut and paste this into a text box rather than just doing the or you or type tool. Okay, so next step is to bake. And cool. And we'll do an in dash in there since that's the proper hyphenation for the number ranges. And there we have it. We've got our directions. So we've got all of our content, and I grabbed the image from the recipe. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the screen grab that I had, and let's move this off here and figure out how we want to lay out the page. Um, so this recipe is pretty short, so I think that we actually could fit it all side by side and not have too much of a scroll with that image taking up the, the left-hand column here. So I'm going to adjust the spacing on the details of the recipe here. Um, and let's pick a typeface before we get too much further. I'm going to go with Roboto. Um, it's a nice clean typeface that is, uh, it's pretty modern and it um, has a little bit of like a, it's not really in your face, but it's kind of like a very subtle femininity to it. Um, which being a cooking blog, you can assume your primary users are female. Um, that's not always the case, but um, since we're going to go with our primary user, we'll go with this typeface that introduces a little bit of femininity. That's a word, right? I feel like I make up a lot of words. Okay, 
So let's see here. I'll make the labels for these a little slighter, slighter, slightly more heavy uh, font weight here. And we'll match that with our list headers as well. Then let's fix this alignment on our ingredients list here. Let's actually break this into two separate text fields here. So we've got our units of measurement and then we've got our ingredient list and let's get those lined up so we can do our units right aligned and our ingredients left aligned um, and that visually makes it really easy to scan. So let's tweak the spacing here and Maybe, no, I'm going to stick with the same font weight. I was going to try to modify the font weight, but I think that's going to visually confuse it with the our list titles here. Um, and I think the easiest way to get these guys into a numbered list that the uh, content is left aligned is to make those separate text boxes as well. So we'll go with that, and I'm going to... Copy paste that and we'll decrease the letting there a little bit. Um, we'll get our numbers back. And then we've got to account for the soft returns for our shorter line lengths here. So we bump our type, our text box out a little bit. And let's see here. So that is a soft return. Let's add a little bit of spacing before our paragraphs here to make sure that we've got these visually distinct. Okay, and then we'll add a few soft returns in here to account for the longer uh, numbered item here. Okay, so we've got our list and I'm gonna adjust some spacing here. Make sure that the labels feel like they're actually part of the list and that each one is its own unit. And then we're going to adjust the white space a little bit between these things. Okay, it's feeling pretty plain, which I want to go with something pretty clean, especially given the image that I grabbed. It feels very clean and uh, kind of geometric, so I don't want to introduce too much here. I want to keep it clean, so I'm going to introduce these rules a little bit. Or not introduce them a little bit. I'm going to align them and adjust the color a little bit. Um, so let's see. Let's get them into position. I think it feels a little better if they are underneath the list headers here. And then let's play with color here. I want to go with uh, introduce some warm colors to kind of pull in the warmth of the cookie here. So we'll go with a kind of a tan here because I still want to keep it neutral. Like I said, I don't want to introduce too much. Um, I want to keep this pretty plain. I know this image is only one recipe, but assuming we are on a blog, we also want to keep it pretty neutral just so that we allow the content to really speak and not detract from it, especially being a recipe blog. We don't know what kind of recipes we're going to be coming across. So it could be more than just baking. It could be, I don't know, could be enchiladas or it could be Indian food and we don't want to introduce too much personality that makes it feel like this is just a blog for sweets if we're going to have a variety of content here. So let's play with alignment. Um, I made that header a little bigger and let's see. Make those a little heavier. And we'll adjust the spacing here. I want to round the corners on this image, so I'm going to put it in a clipping mask so that I can do that. There we go. We'll round these corners a little bit. And adjust our gutter space here between the columns. And I think, let's tuck these in a little bit. It's feeling a little too airy, like things are starting to float. I'm going to increase the font size because the uh, contrast between the header font and the body font was too much and the contrast between the body font and those details up top of yield and timing was not quite enough. So 
there's that and we'll make sure that our line lengths are equal so we'll wrap that description we'll bump that header up a little bit more and we'll make the image a little larger just kind of making everything fit onto this artboard as if it were our web page container mm, now I'm gonna bump that back up I was gonna try to see if we could have the those details below the description but I think that they feel like they're floating a little bit too much they feel nice feel like a nice unit up there with the header okay so there's our layout um, and I'm going to throw this into a container make it a clipping mask and the next thing is to make this actually feel a little bit more like a, an actual website um, I'm kind of combining this with the dribble shot aspect of this. Um, so we've got the layout for the recipe, which was the prompt. But in order for it to make sense as a dribble shot, I'm going to make it look like it's actually part of a recipe blog or a cooking blog. Um, so we will make up a fake blog called Recipes. Very original, I know. Super creative with the words. Um, so we'll align that and then let's add some navigation here. So like I said before, we're going to design for a blog that is has a wide range of recipes. So I'm going to add in navigation for appetizers and side dishes and entrees. But what, let's call that protein and desserts, which would be our cookies. Um, so let's get a... The other thing that is really important on a recipe blog would be search so that users don't have to just dig through every single recipe to find something interesting. If they're looking for something specific, they can do a search and see if they find it and save them a lot of time. So let's do that. We'll put that at an angle and we'll pop it in here with the navigation. And let's get that aligned. I'm going to base align it, so we'll do that. And then let's bump it down a little bit. Felt like it was a little bit too high up and floating up there. Um, and then let's compose our shot. So we've got this web page that we'll add a soft uh, drop shadow to, and then just a really subtle background to play to carry through the idea that we've got this clean interface here. Okay, so we've got the pull in that warm tone here, but I'm going to add these organic shapes to kind of add some texture and liven it up a little bit without being too drastic here. So I'm just going to do like a uh, transparent white here. So we've got some shapes. And there we go. We've got our dribble shot. We've got our recipe. And we'll do it again next week. Thanks for hanging out.